Well, hello, hello. It's Mary with Stamps and Lingers, and it is Thursday at uh, 1 o'clock p.m. Eastern on the Eastern Coast. Not the not the Western one, the Eastern one. So it is time for a Facebook Live. Let's go ahead and just be sure I am transmittalating over here. We'll wait until everything kind of refreshes a little bit and see what we've got. Okay, I saw my hand go through, so that's a good sign. Hi, Faith. Appreciate you joining. All right, so here is our card. Um, at our meeting last week, our team meeting, we did a slimline easel. And I remembered how much I enjoyed slimline easel cards. Uh, they're kind of fun. And so I decided to make one again. But instead of going Christmas, I went birthday, and um, I decided to use... The Sending Smile stamp set, which, oh, by the way, if you don't want the dies, although you do, but if you didn't want the dies, uh, the Sending Smiles is part of the 15% uh, stamp sale. So, hello, Denise and Rosie and Faith and Vicki. Appreciate y'all coming. And Mary Lou and Mary Kay. All right. Okay, so here is the card. And as you might imagine, it's a slim line. That's why I said slim line when I brought it up. And it's an easel card, so it pops up like this and rests on the easel. And then you can read Sending Birthday Wishes. And you can see the beautiful cards. It's in fall colors, so this reminds me of my garden out there as it is getting ready to call it a day for the winter. And I've used one of the slimline envelopes. Now, this is one of the gray granite ones. And I'm going to tell you, I don't love it in gray granite, but I had exactly one white slim white envelope left so i decided to do this one in gray granite and then i'll use the white one for this card that we're fixing to make on the video and we'll decide which one we like better all right so let's get started everything will be on my blog tomorrow so you don't even need to take notes or anything you can just sit back and enjoy hey pam hi penny and karen and Anne, appreciate you guys coming. All right, I have a little bit of a mess here. Okay, so the card base is a eight and a half this direction and seven and a half this direction. So as you can see, eight and a half is how long it is, and it turns out to be three and a half inches tall or deep or wide, however you like to look at it. And that's what helps it go into a slimline envelope. So three and a half by eight. It, or eight and a half is about right for a slimline card, even if you, whether you're using our envelopes or not. That's a slimline card. Okay, so I'm going to put the seven inch across the top, and I am going to use my um, fat end, and I'm going to score once at three and a half, so that's just half of seven, three and a half. And then we've got one, two, three and a half left. Hello. So this is going to be one and three quarters um, here. So that's going to be five and a half. So one and a half plus a half plus a quarter. Yeah, is one and three quarters. There we go. Okay. And that is all of the scoring that you have to do for this. For this here easel card. Hi, Dancine. Hi, Joyce. Hi, Faye. Appreciate you coming. All right. And we're going to go ahead and fold it like so. And give it a good crease on an easel card. A lot of its um, stand up and, and be noticed is part of how good a job you do burnishing these. So give them a good burnish with your bone folder. And that was very difficult. We've just made a slimline easel card. You can see how that works. Okay, so I'm going to set that aside and we're going to get to decorating. I have a mat, which is going to also be the card front, which is also going to be the easel. And it is Mossy Meadow. And I'm going to take a piece of the Rustic Harvest in Crushed Curry. Hey, Jaretta. Hi, Linda. Appreciate you coming. And Lorraine. Hi, Lorraine from Texas. All righty. And we're just going to use some liquid glue. Now, I am going to tell you that I actually remembered, when I made my sentiment today, I remembered to use the adhesive sheets. So, we're going to do that today, and you'll see how it goes. Okay, now, because I love you, and I didn't want you to have to sit and watch me stamp and die cut approximately an entire garden's worth of flowers, I did a little of that ahead of time. So, let's see what I have here in my little bag of tricks. All right, now, my flowers are combinations of pumpkin pie, 
for the petals and then crushed curry for the middles and these are all stamps everything this is a stamp the middle is a stamp the leaves are stamped everything is a stamp all right so i've got three of those and then two i think two we'll see what happens when i turn them over two of it's the same flower just a different orientation and then i stamped two of these these are mary merlot and i haven't used mary merlot in a long time so I thought it would be fun to add it. And again, with the crushed curry centers. And then I have stamped and cut some leaf stems. These are in Mossy Meadow. And then I stamped and cut out one leaf with Bold Olive. Okay, so this is all of the die cuts that we're going to use with the exception of the sentiment. So let's go ahead and make the sentiment. When I first made this card, and you can tell me what you think here. Thanks, Linda. I appreciate that. Thank you, Jody. Welcome from Granbury, Texas. We had we had family living in Granbury at one point. All right. So when I first started putting this card together, when I made my sentiment, this was my color combo. And I looked at it and I looked at it and it was like the, the sentiment just disappeared. And so I made a second one and I used Mary Merlot as the shadow and then again with the crushed curry as the sentiment. And I don't know, I, I'm hoping you think so, but I think this is a way better combination. Okie doke. And now we're going to play with the adhesive sheets, okay? So that I can cut the so you get both of these dies. This is the shadow die that I did in Mary Merlot. And then this is going to be the detailed die for the, the, uh, the pop-up sentiment portion. It doesn't pop up. So when you're using this adhesive sheet, you're going to take the front off where it says peel here. And it's, it's really sticky, you guys. But it rolls right off of your fingers. So don't fret. So you're going to peel it off like so. And then I tend to try to cut the sheet down to be about the size I need so that I'm not wasting it. And you just adhere it to the back of whatever you're cutting with. Okay. And then I have some on me. And since it's a little long, I'm going to go ahead and... Hey, Vicki, that is a small world, isn't it? I'm going to go ahead and snip that off so it doesn't get all sticky in my... Ooh, that went everywhere on there. I'll just roll it off. Or I'll just put that on it like that and leave it. Deez, that's very sticky. Okay, so now that I have that, I'm going to go turn behind me here, and I'm going to roll this through my um, stamp and cut and emboss, stamp and cut and emboss machine. Okay, so I'll be right back. And I'll tell you why I did this um, and didn't do it ahead of time. With the adhesive sheet on the back of the cardstock and this detail of a thin die cut, what happens is, is as soon as you start taking this die off, it pulls the backing off. Now you see, it's not going to do it because I said that, but the two others that I've done on this card did that. This is the ideal way, is where it just comes out like this. Don't look. Here's the thing about this sending right there. That is not a release point. That is the, uh, oh gosh, I used to know the name of that little dot. It's the dot. It's the eye dotter. Okay. So hang on to that. But what will sometimes happen is that it will get a good enough cut that the die picks the die cut right off of the adhesive sheet. So then you have you know, a, a ready to adhere sentiment. And that is why I didn't do it ahead of time. See how it's separating right there? So I didn't want it sitting around because I figured for certain sure I would manage to, oh, you know, you know, you know me, if you've been around at all, an injection hole. Yeah, but it's the eye. What's the name of the eye thing? The dot that goes at the top of the eye. It has a name and we've discussed it previously, but I have slept a few times and so I have totally forgotten. But you wanna save that part. So anyway, what I was gonna say, I don't know. I got tracked off like a bunny. You do wanna get your little hanging chads out of the way before you, and it's very sticky, but what's interesting is it's actually pretty easy to work with. 
Not going to go so far as to say that I think it's easier than liquid glue, but it just depends on how you feel about liquid glue and little tiny die cuts. Okay, so now we're going to pull the backing off, and it's off of the whole thing. And so then it's just a matter, and I did this for you so that you could cut a tittle. There it is. There it is. It's the tittle. It's a tittle. Yes. Yeah, Mary Lou, I think the tilde is that little thingy that goes on top of ends in Spanish words. Like, yeah, enya makes it a enya. Okay, so when you're using this, what I think is the best way to do is not that. Don't drop it. I like to start at one end and just put the sentiment in place. Get the S started. Once you get the S started... And it's real thin, so you can kind of manipulate it like that. All right. And then put the other letters right where they belong on their shadow. All right. Just like that. And if you were using liquid glue, I would do it exactly the same way. You just probably couldn't get your fingers all over it because then you'd, you'd really have liquid glue pretty much everywhere you wanted, wanted to be and places you didn't want it to be. So the adhesive is going to seem like it's not sticking. It sticks really well to your fingers, but it acts like it's not going to stick to the cardstock. But in fact it is. It just takes a minute. You know, it's weird, isn't it, that some some adhesives, even ones that aren't liquid, they tend to take a second to decide that they're going to stick. But you can see that they did, so I'm just going to turn it over and give it a good pressing. A pressing. It's a pressing matter. <laughs> And then I'm going to get my tittle out. I'm going to try to get that back off while I'm... No, no, I'm not. I guess I'm not. Okay. So I can tell I'm starting to get old. It's getting to where my arms aren't the right length to be able to see that, right? Isn't that weird? Hey, Daryl. Jot or tittle. Hmm. Could be either one. All right, let me get this in my tweezers. Okay, so the back is still on there, which means I need to get it off. And no joke, I think these are easier to put on with liquid glue, the little dot guy. But you do you. Okay, so there he is. He's off. I definitely couldn't do it without tweezers. And then you can put it right there. So you can see it really makes a difference. I think you really kind of want to hang on to that little dot. Okay, so now let's go ahead and put together our card front. And I know I'm going to have sending kind of in the middle. And obviously I know where I'm putting everything because, yeah, I've already got one made. So I'm just going to assemble it. But when I did this the first time, it didn't go together as quickly, obviously. I had to, you know, play with it a little bit. I, I cut a bunch of pieces of foliage and a bunch of flowers and I just kept working it until what is the answer until your brain goes yeah uh-huh there it is when it does that then that's time to stop and take a picture that's what I like to do and and then go from there all right so we're gonna put these flowers over like this And the cool thing is, is you can kind of decide where they're going to go. Let's see. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I think I needed another one. Yeah. Hang on. All right. Let's see what we get here now if we put that one in like that. Okay. Yeah, this is going to work nice. We'll get this working. See, you can do whatever you want, guys. It just, you know, you don't need to do what I'm doing. Do you do you? But I know I want a, I know I want a, one of these up here. I do want one of these up here. There's where I was kind of missing it, I think. There we go. There we go. And we'll put him here. And then we're going to put a couple of, we're going to put one of the Mary Merlots up here. And the other Mary Merlot, nobody's going to know that there's not an actual stem there. You just put it down and it'll look like there's a stem. And then this guy is going to go over the top 
with the sentiment like so. Okay, so just play with it until it looks right to you. Once it looks right, you're done. You're done. That's all you got to do. Ah, feeling like fall. I know it. It's wonderful. Um, we're doing the same thing here. It's just getting to where in the afternoon about 2, we like to close the house back up. But it's wonderful to be able to open it up at night and uh, and sleep with the, the doors open. Not the, you know, not the doors. Because, you know, come on, it is Atlanta that we live in here. I think we'll put this here. And then we'll put this guy here. Let's tuck him under there like we did on the sample. Because that worked good. We liked it on the sample, so why wouldn't we like it on this one? And I've gotten a little jiggy with my glue, so I'm going to just wipe that up a little bit with my damp paper towel. Which is not a paper towel at all. It's a chamois. W-R-J-C-T. Wordzicht? Wordzicht? You're in Wordzicht? Alright. So now... We'll go ahead and start putting on our stems and our flowers. Put on some flowers and some stems. Put on some flowers and some stems. Kind of going to keep track of where I want my sentiment to be. And I'm using liquid glue for this because there's, there's really kind of a lot of um, thickness. So you can... You can get your dimension from the card itself. You don't really need to have a lot of extra dimensionals. We're going to pop that sentiment up with, with dimensionals, though. So that will be a nice little touch, I think. All right. So there we go. And we'll go ahead and adhere these guys, too. No. Oh, I was like, oh, geez, I didn't, I didn't adhere that. No, you didn't, Mary, because you weren't ready to. Hello. Hello. White River Junction, Connecticut. Got it. It sounds like... So are the leaves starting to turn there? Uh, I'm not sure. Maybe it's too, a little too early yet. It could be a little too early yet. All right. Now we'll put our, our flowers on. Like that. And we'll put a... I really love this Mary Merlot. It's uh, purplier than I remember it being. So, and you know, I, this is awfully tall up there. So let's pull this down just a little bit. There we go. And we'll put another orange flower here. And I think instead of putting the other... Maybe I'll put that, yeah, let's see. I got an extra stem, so I did something a little different on this one than I did on my sample, which is fine. It's art, hello. Yeah, see, I really think that needs to be there like that. So I'm just gonna leave that down. Maybe I'll cut another flower, what do you think? Maybe I'll cut another flower. That's crazy talk. Cut another flower, Mary. But I think it would want to be one of those Mary Merlots, don't you? Mm, let's see. I'm gonna put the I'm gonna put this on, and then we can add the flower later if we want to. I'm gonna put some dimensionals on the back here, and I've got my little half dimensionals, which are particularly handy for doing these kinds of dies, die cuts. And I want to be kind of generous because I want it to be sticking where I put it and I want it to not wiggle. No wiggling. We don't want any wiggling. So that's there like that. And then I'm going to cut a half into a half, which if you paid attention in school, makes it a quarter of a dimensional and put it right there. Okay. Now we'll go ahead and adhere this on. Thank you. I really like the Mary Merlot. It's very cool. <laughs> hey, Jean. I know it. It takes a minute. I always have to stop and in the morning go, okay, now am I going to Facebook? When I get ready to post the thing that says I'll be live in an hour, am I going to Facebook or am I going to YouTube? I can't remember. 
it's too hard to remember. Okay, so we're going to kind of center this up. Like so. And then this guy is going to go, right, and should have put him on first. Should have put him on first. Hang on. What do I always say? It's paper, people. Make it do what you want it to do. I'm just throwing that out there. Okay, so we're going to put that like that. Good. I'll take it. I'll take that for a thousand, Bob. And you know, I think I'm going to let that stem be loose right there until I think differently of it. Okay, so now I'm going to put my glue lid back on. And I'm going to take a double length of linen thread. About that much. And I'm just going to tie a simple bow. Tie a yellow ribbon round the old oak tree. We haven't got a yellow ribbon or an oak tree here in the craft room. Okay, let's go. Let's pull it like so. Something ain't fitting with that. That was a hot mess right there. That was what we like to call in the card making industry, fail not, fail not. That's a fail not right there. Now, if I was really paying attention to time and really worried about it, it's your time I'm wasting, not mine. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, that's, that's done. Okay. That was the knot of death right there, which I might could have gotten fixed, but not in any amount of time that you guys want to spend here, I promise. Okay, so I think this time I'll cut it in half. Usually I can make that happen and cut it in half after, but apparently my brain isn't working. All right, so let's try that again. Okay, there we go. Now we're starting to make a an actual bow instead of a knot of death. I don't know, it's like the linen thread has gotten very curly these days and I'm, I keep forgetting to do something about that. <sighs> Goodness gracious. I've said it before and I will say it again. The perversity of an inanimate object is a wonderful thing. And that's just really not good. You know, I don't know, you've seen my videos. I don't usually have quite so much trouble with bows but i am having trouble with them today you know why because it's thursday no I, I don't know i have no idea maybe the sun is in the wrong spot in the sky i don't know there we go there we go okay there we go now it's coming to Whew. i was starting to think we weren't ever going to get a bow people not ever get a bow never get a bow all right, now get my tweezers and a glue dot, and we will adhere that. I know, Heidi, right? Okay, and we're going to stick him right there, like a shoe. And then I'm going to push that glue dot up under there. You kind of have to squish the glue dot a little bit, guys. Then I'm going to take some um, white classic matte dots. Where's my other piece? Here we go. And I'm going to add a few of those here and there. Like that. Now, just so you know, I've used white on the inside as my... Um, inner liner but i stamped all of these on very vanilla just because i like that against the uh the cajun craze better okay so that's just so you know because you know i know you're going to want to make this you're going to be like mary you realize you used white on the inside and vanilla on the outside and i'm going to say yes okay so there's five that's an uh, odd number that's good so there's my card front now i'm going to show you how we're going to put the inside in and this is kind of important because the inside, where it goes and where the easel stop goes, is really pretty critical, okay? And it drives a lot of things. So I've got my piece of basic white here, and then somewhere over here, I stamped birthday wishes in Mary Merlot, and I cut it with a stitched rectangle die, okay? And I'm going to just mat it on some Mossy Meadow. 
Yeah, that's a really good idea, Rosie. Um, yeah, I should have done that, and I didn't. So I'm just matting it on Mossy Meadow, and this is going to be our easel stop, okay, which means it wants to be on dimensionals. Which, there we go, we're going to put some dimensionals on. Okay. And then I think before we go too much further, let's put our card front on the easel itself. That will make life easier. So what's going to happen is this is going to go on this card front just as if the card front was not an easel. Okay, so it's going to have all the reveals the same on the sides. The difference is going to be there's only going to be adhesive on this part of the card front. If you put it on this part of the card front, you've just made a regular easel card, or slimline card, okay, which is great, but it's not what we're after here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the glue down here, and I'm staying away from the edges because I know that I'm not going to go down that far. And then I'm just going to pick this up, I'm going to keep it closed, and I'm going to set it in place as if it was closed. Well, I mean, it is closed. What I meant to say is as if it was just a slimline card. And just push here. Okay. And there you can see we're only adhered on the bottom. And it was very, very simple. And when you close it, it's perfect. Okay. So that's the way to put that together. Now, the reason we did that, I need to get the glue off of my fingers. Hmm. Yep. Bone folder as well. Hey, from Snellville, Nisi. Nisi, is that right? Um, welcome. Okay, so this is how I did this, and, and why it mattered to me was I wanted it so that when this was open, the flowers were visible here, but not going out of the, out of the picture, as it were. So I didn't want the flowers to come clear up into here. I, you could do it like that if you wanted, but I didn't want it like that. So what I did is I did like a dry fit. Okay, so I didn't even adhere this because I'm going to stamp on it, and I don't want to stamp on it with my mat. And then I put it in place like that. Okay, and I put my sentiment, and uh, no, still a dry fit, in place to see where I thought it would be good. And I just kind of held it like this. And then I set it up and I said to myself, yeah, that looks pretty good. I like it right there like that. Yes, I do. Okay, so now I know where this is going. You could do a couple of things here. You could use a little pencil mark, but this is what I did. I just picked it up like so. Move that out of the way. And then I took my ruler. This is this is very complicated, okay? I took my ruler and I lined it up like so so I would see where the right side was and I put an inch mark at the top, okay? So now I know that I want the right side of my sentiment there and I want the top of it at the five. Yeah, it was really, really scientific, right? Thanks, Pam. Thank you, Marianne. I hope your shoulder is doing well, better and that you are rotating it frequently like the PT people told you. See you, Heidi. Have a good day. Uh, let's see. Okay, got all of them off. Just put it on right side up, just saying. But I mean, that's just me. You do you, but that's just me. And try to make it straight. And yeah, I know it moved, but it didn't move very much. Okay, so I'm just trying to make sure it's straight because I'm going to use it as the, as the alignment. All right, and before I push it down, I'm going to make sure I'm still happy with it. And, in fact, I am. Okay. So there's that. Now I'm going to pick this up and I'm going to do a little stamping. Okay? So, I don't want my, I know I don't, I don't want my flowers coming above there. Right? If you want your flowers above there, you stamp to your heart's content. But I wanted them below there. So, I'm going to start with these, this image on this side. Let me show you a little trick. And I learned this by doing it three times, not this way, just saying. When, 
this one right here, this flower really drives where the whole thing is, right? So I worked backwards. I stamped this image first, then the crushed curry, and then I put the leaves on. And by doing that, I was able to kind of drive the whole rest of it, okay? If I had not done it like that, there was a very strong chance it was going to go every which way from Sunday. So I, I like Sunday. Sunday is fine, but, you know. So we're going to take the top of that flower, and I'm going to put it right there like so and the little this little doohickey right here the doohickey is what i like to call the inside and on this that you see the raised part right there that part goes towards the petals and i know that seems like duh but i can assure you i had to look at the samples in the catalog about a thousand times before my brain registered that i don't know why it was so hard but it for surely was I really had a hard time with that. I don't know why. Okay. Now, I don't know. I hear it too, Mary Lou, and I have no idea why. None. None. All right. So I'm going to stamp the uh, the two-prong leaf in um, Mossy Meadow. And this top one is where this flower goes. So I'm going into it. But I want to be cognizant of where that one is. Okay. So I don't want it like this, because that would put my flower high. I'm going to put it like right there. Like that. Now, obviously, there are approximately 6.7 million different ways that you can do this. You do however makes you the happiest. All right, so there is that flower. And then we're going to use the inside stamp in Crushed Curry. Okay. Now on the other side, I'm going to put this away before I have a mess. I mean, I'll have to get it back out, but I don't want to have a total mess. I'm going to use the Mary Merlot flower, and I'm going to do the same thing. I'm going to stamp him first, the flower itself first, so that I put it where I want it, like that. And then we'll put the middle in. Let's see, where'd you go, middle? Here he is. This little middle guy is just so little. Okay. And then, let's see, we'll put in, how about a little flower? Let's get a little flower going on here, or a little leaf stem thingy doohickey. We're going to go like this. And then I'm going to go, I'm going to go like that. And then I'm going to take, oops, oops, oops. I almost had an ink catastrophe. Ink catastrophe, ink catastrophe. Alert, alert. Close this. Get my pumpkin back out. And get, uh, this is possibly one of my favorite flowers. I don't know why, but I really, really, really like it. And we're going to put him right there like that. And then put the middle in the middle, because that's where middles ought to go, is in the middle. And then we're going to close this up until we're ready to do our envelope. Next up, we're going to assemble this, and we're going to be done ske, I says to you. I'm scared to even look at my watch. There's no telling how long this has taken today. Now, I know it seems weird, but I'm putting a white matte dot on my white sentiment just because i liked it okay and you know you do you you know what you also could do you could take your um mossy meadow or pumpkin pie or um old olive stampin blends and color that and then you could put a colored one on there if you preferred thank you i know it fall is coming my mom just sent me a cool t-shirt it's a long sleeve which it's almost getting to be time time for here in Georgia um, and it just it has leaves on the front fall leaves and it says my favorite color is fall and I think that's about right I think that's just about right all right now we're just going to adhere this to the inside of the card and the magic of easel land is coming together 
And we're just gonna make sure that that reveal is about the same all the way around. Like so, there we go. And then, boom, Chaka Laka. And it's a lovely card to have, yeah. Mm -hmm. Lovely card to have for your recipient because they can set it up and see their your wishes. And there's actually room to write a message above above there if you'd like. But what I need to do right now is grab my little rubber eraser. Oh, rubber eraser, because I got a little bit of glue right there. And that's going to come a cropper if I'm not careful. And by come a cropper, I mean make a huge mess. If you don't have a rubber eraser yet in your stash, go on Amazon and get one. Or go to Michael's or go to Hobby Lobby or go to Joann's and get one. I promise it will be <laughs> the thing that saves many, many many a card okay now i told you that i used gray granite for my first card and i think it's fine it actually i like how it kind of mutes those colors but i'm going to use my one and only final last one have no more in my arsenal white envelope and we're going to see which one we like better so first i'm going to stamp the leaves that i cannot find Hang on. Hang on. It's right here, Mary. Okay. And we're going to stamp them in Mossy Meadow. And because I'm making a terrible mess, I'll go ahead and clean that block off before I ruin my last white envelope. Because I can do that quicker than I can blink. Blink. All right. We'll put him down like so. And then we're going to do a couple of pumpkin pie couple of pumpkin pies. There you go. Dollar store works too. Anywhere you can get a rubber eraser, I highly recommend having one. Highly recommend having one. Stamp that one. And then stamp my second favorite little, little flower. Oops. Don't do that. When you're stamping like this, you want to work out. Trust me. Okay, so I've got my leaves, so I'm going to put my middle, that little middle that goes with that image, with the little doohickey part up. And I'm not saying that because I think you can't remember. I'm saying it so I will remember because I can forget so fast. Now that I have this out, let's just do this right quick. There we go. Aren't these the prettiest flowers? I just love, and I forget about this card too, or this set too, and that is unfortunate. This set should never be forgotten, ever. Remember this set, always. And the force will be with you, always. Okay, so stinking cute. Now, these envelopes all have A little bit of a decoration on the inside but I figure what the heck I'm gonna do a little advanced fussy cutting here and put a little bit of the rustic harvest on this envelope flap this one's got this one's got scallops and everything scary 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 oh gosh I've gone way over again haven't I mm -mm -mm. this is two videos in a row that I have gone over 30 minutes oh my gosh I am sorry. Too much yakking. Uh, no, I know what it was. It was that silly baker's or linen thread being persnickety, persnickety. But now we're done. Now I promise we're really done. All right, there we go. So we have it with the white envelope and we have it with the gray granite envelope. So I'm just going to say I don't love the gray granite envelope, but I don't hate it either, right? I don't even hate it. So get it. Truly, 15% 15, 15 off, get the Stampin' Up, get this Sending Smile stamp set, and then pay the full price for the, um, for the dies. I'm pretty certain that that's a better deal than the bundled price. And it, yeah, I'm just saying... Um, if you don't have sending smiles, you really ought to get it. All right. End of the day, 15% stamp sale. Get, get it now. Don't be sad. Hopefully, I'll see you on Saturday for YouTube. It'll be YouTube at 7 o'clock. And have a great rest of your week. And good start to your weekend. Thanks so much, guys. See you. Bye.